In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. With your spirit. We gather today in a special manner for those who are celebrating their 50 years of marriage, their jubilee. Since we couldn't gather together, I promise that on this day of October 10th and 11th weekend, we would honor them at this Mass, and we will have also a special blessing for them at the end of Mass. Let us uh, begin the Eucharist as we always do, asking the Lord for forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to a people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I 
I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, he revives my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the day. Guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. I shall live in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance, and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might see how great is the hope to which we are called. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants saying, tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fatted cattle are killed and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murders, and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guest, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside. 
where there will be wailing and the grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned, we are dedicating this Mass this weekend for those who are celebrating their jubilees, unable to gather as we usually do each year at the cathedral. So my hearty congratulations to all of you. And I chose this date because of the particular gospel reading that we just heard. It is about a wedding feast. And in fact, Jesus, on a number of occasions, speaks about the kingdom of God as a wedding party, as a feast, as a wedding reception. And it seems to me that it's so appropriate for us to look at this gospel and maybe find some of the blessings that we have received, that you have received during your years of married life together. Because the kingdom is not about something far off in the future. It's about what God is doing and has done in your life. The first thing we notice is how the king is really in charge of everything. He is overlooking everything. He takes care of making sure that everything's prepared. He makes sure he prepares an invitation list, even sends people out two and three times to invite them to come. And then at the end, he even takes care of someone who is an unruly guest. It's a reminder of that ubiquitous presence of God in your life, of how we all live in the gaze of God. Something at times that we lose sight of because we are preoccupied with the concerns in our own life. I'm told that there was a real change in the religious art world around the year 1000. Up to that point, religious art used to be manifested by the icon where the Holy One would be looking at us. And wherever you would go within a room looking at an icon, the eyes would follow you. And then a year around year 1000, those saints were then part of a landscape in the background. We were the ones who looked at them rather than they looking at us. I think we need to recapture that sense of living in the gaze of God, not as a God who looks where our mistakes are, but one who has a careful watch over us. And perhaps you have experienced that in your life in difficult moments. And in fact, we do see that in the rest of the reading. Whenever there was a difficulty for that wedding couple, the king was there, the father was there to take care of them. Because from the very beginning, the thing was going to be a disaster. They were invited, people were invited, and nobody was going to show up. I think of those people who are now having weddings these days in the pandemic where they're limited in how many people they can invite and even disappointed that some family and friends can't be there with them. But the Lord tells us in those moments in which we lack that like this king who was always with them to fix the problems that were there, that the Lord so often has been in your life in moments of difficulty and setback. And finally, we see in this gospel text how those who were invited were also a part of the celebration itself. It's a reminder of how the Lord has given you so many people in your lives, not only those who were at the wedding feast, but in the wedding feast of your whole life that have celebrated who you are, have nourished you by their friendship, have been a part of who you are in raising your children. The Lord has, in fact, brought and invited many people into your life that no doubt you are grateful for. So today, as you mark your time together, your 50 years of married life, remember that the Lord has blessed you in so many different ways. You have lived in his gaze. He has helped you in those moments of difficulty and setback. And he has been sending with you by sending people in your lives that you're grateful for. I remember years ago that in my parish, when there, were, when there was a wedding, there used to be this practice of the dollar dance where the men would pin a dollar on the bride and the women uh, a dollar on the, on the groom and they would dance with them. And then at the end, they would be filled with all sorts of contributions. It was a way of saying, and, and maybe in, in any ways predicting, how those friendships, those people who were there, would enrich the couple for the rest of their lives. No doubt you had that sense as well, that you've been enriched by so many people. And so today, we're here not only to congratulate you, but to invite you 
to have real sense of gratitude for the many gifts that you have received over these years, that the Lord has been with you every step of the way in those moments of trial and has sent you so many good friends that have enriched your life. Congratulations to all of you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. With trust in God's merciful and abundant love, we now make these requests known to him. For our church, may we continue to grow in holiness and strength by God's grace and nurture a culture of healing and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that we will take our citizenship seriously and participate in the political process and elect leaders who will promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving and with joy for all our jubilarians. May their witness of fidelity inspire each of us as we take up our own vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those suffering with COVID-19, that they would find healing and full recovery from their illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially the deceased family members of our jubilarians, that they may see the face of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all graces, everything we have comes from you. We entrust to you the concerns of our world, knowing that we live in your provident gaze. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory, <clears throat> memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, <clears throat> the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you are in my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be
an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, on the 50th anniversary of that celebration in which you were joined in your in the unbreakable bond through the sacrament of matrimony, we you now intend to renew before the Lord the promises that you made to one another. So turn to the Lord in prayer in this moment that these vows may be strengthened by divine grace. Lord God and creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of those jubilarians so that they might reflect the union of Christ with the church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and the struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And again, my heartfelt congratulations to all of our jubilarians. I ask that you continue to pray for me in the archdiocese as we do for you, but also to support your parishes and your pastors. They depend on you, and I know that they celebrate with all those who are celebrating jubilees this year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be God. Thy kingdom of God is justice and joy. For Jesus restores what sin would destroy. God's power and glory in Jesus we know. And here 